Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. I am back with the Atari VCS and today we're going to do a teardown and some performance upgrades. We're actually going to upgrade the RAM in this unit by volume and speed and we're also going to tweak the CPU's TDP so we can maximize the performance of the Atari VCS. Now recently someone came across the BIOS password for the Atari VCS so we can finally access it. That way we can add faster RAM to this unit and this is actually utilizing an AMD APU so the faster we can make that RAM the better GPU performance we can get out of this thing. There's not a lot of headroom here due to the low powered embedded AMD APU used in this unit but we can definitely maximize the performance that this Atari VCS can put out with a few minor tweaks. All right, so the first thing we need to do is pull the rear and the front bezel off. It's pretty easy to do, it just snaps right on. I've already pulled the rubber feet off so I can access the screws on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and get these out and then we can pull the top of the unit right off of this thing. But keep in mind that the wires connected to your Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module might pull off you can snap them right back on, just be easy with it when you're pulling this off. As you can see, they're attached to the top cover and they're pretty short. So here's the Wi-Fi module, 802.11ac and Bluetooth 5.0. It's actually pretty fast and connectivity over Bluetooth is really good with this little unit. Now it's time to pull the main board out. As you can see here, we do have one free M.2 slot so we can add an M.2 SSD and I will be doing that in this video. We also have our cooling system here, it's a ducted vent, and this thing does get pretty loud when it's ramped up all the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this metal shield. There's three screws here, I just need to get access to the underside of this thing. Once that's done, we have two ribbon cables on each side for the front USB. I'm going to remove these, you don't want to pull this thing out with them still attached, you could break them and lose your front USB ports. Now that I have all of that out of the way, I just need to remove the remaining motherboard screws or the main board screws so I can go ahead and get this out of here. The RAM is located on the bottom side of this board and that's really what we want to upgrade here. So with all the screws and ribbon cables removed, we can pull this main board right out of here. I'm going to flip it over and as you can see, we have access to our RAM. We have two slots here and I highly recommend running this in dual channel. This is actually the VCS 800 so it did come with 8 gigs of RAM, two sticks of 4 gigabyte DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. I'm actually going to be replacing this with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And while we're here I will pull off the cooling system and I'm going to add some thermal paste to this because I have heard rumor that it's using a thermal pad and we might be able to get a little better cooling out of it using some good thermal paste. I'm going to carefully remove the whole cooling system here. Everything's attached, the fan, the heatsink, and the duct itself. And it definitely looks like they were using some type of thermal pad. So by cleaning all of this up and adding some good thermal paste, there's a chance we could get better thermals out of this whole unit. And real quick, here's a close look at the CPU. This is actually using an AMD Ryzen embedded R1606G. We have two cores, four threads, base clock of 2.6 with a boost up to 3.5. And it also has built-in Radeon 3 Vega graphics. Now, since we have access to the BIOS on the VCS, and I'll show you the password in a second, how to disable it or reset it, we can actually up the TDP of this little chip here, getting us a little better performance out of the CPU. And while we're in there, since we're going to throw faster RAM in this unit, we do want to up that RAM speed in the BIOS, because if you just throw 3200 MHz in it like it sits right now, it'll only run at 2400 MHz, giving you the same performance. I'm going to throw some Noctua NTH1 thermal paste on this unit and reassemble the whole cooling system. Then we'll turn this thing over and upgrade the RAM. Alright, so I've got it reassembled. Just threw a little bit of paste on there. Everything looks like it's good to go. It's time to upgrade the RAM. So what we have in the Atari VCS 800 is 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. When it comes to these built-in Radeon Vega graphics, it's dependent on system memory. So the faster it is, the better performance we can get out of that GPU. So with this one here, I'm actually going to be upgrading from 2400 MHz to 3200 MHz RAM. I'm also going to be upgrading the size, giving this 16 gigs of RAM. But if you just want to keep it cheap, you can still go with 8. Just make sure it is faster RAM than 2400 MHz. 
If you've ever replaced laptop RAM, it's the same exact thing. We're using laptop RAM in this unit because it has those SODEM slots. I will leave links in the description where you can get faster RAM. You can pick it up on Amazon, Newegg, or even eBay. So now I've upgraded the RAM, capacity, and speed. I've also added a little thermal paste to that heat sink there. Hopefully we get better cooling. Now I'm going to add an M.2 SSD so I can run Windows on it. So this is a non-NVMe M.2 SSD. It did come with this heat sink. You don't necessarily need it, but I'm going to leave it on there since it already came with it. I'm actually just going to be going with a 256 gigabyte M.2 here because that's the one I had laying around and it'll fit right in this unit. Now, one thing to note when you're adding an SSD to the VCS, it does not come with a screw, so you will have to source one yourself, but this thing should pop right in the M.2 slot. And the VCS will automatically detect the SSD. Now you can install Windows, Linux, or basically any other operating system as long as it supports an x86 CPU. I've already personally installed Windows 10 Pro 64-bit on this SSD here. So I really don't have to do any more configuration except for go into the BIOS and set it to boot from this drive if you want it to boot into Windows or whatever operating system you installed every time you boot up. So yeah, that's basically it for the hardware side of things. I've upgraded the RAM, added this M.2 SSD, and added some thermal paste to that cooler. What I want to do now is get into the BIOS because we definitely want to up the speed of that RAM to get better performance out of this APU. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this unit, and then we'll get right into the BIOS. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the BIOS. Now, I'd say the easiest way to do this is to make sure you have a keyboard plugged into your VCS. Once you plug it in, it's going to automatically start to boot. From there, start pressing delete on your keyboard. It'll bring you to a section that looks like this. As you can see, we have two options here, but we want to choose the second option, reboot into firmware interface. Highlight it and press enter. Now we're at the front page. This isn't quite the BIOS. We want to go down to setup utility. This is going to bring us into the BIOS. As soon as we press enter, it's going to prompt us for a password. The stock password for the VCS is PNO 18482. This is case sensitive. It's a capital P. Press enter. And we're now in the BIOS. So the first thing we're going to do is actually disable the password. So from the top, using your arrow keys on your keyboard, head over to security, set supervisor password. We're going to have to put in the old password, which is PNO 18482 capital P. We'll have to re-enter that password. Now we need to create our new password. I don't want a password, so I'm going to leave this blank. Enter, enter, and there we have it. We've removed the password from the Atari VCS. So next time we boot it up, we don't have to do any kind of password setup to get into the BIOS. Now it's time to change a few settings here. Since we put faster RAM in this unit, we do want to up the RAM speed from the BIOS. We're also going to up the wattage on the CPU. So from here, we're going to scroll over to AMD CBS, scroll down to UMC common options, DDR4 common options, DRAM timing configuration. We're going to choose accept, overclock. We're going to change this to enabled. And now we're going to go to memory clock speed. It's set to auto. It's going to default to 2400 megahertz. But if we enter here, you can see that we have a few different options. Now, each one of these is at half speed. So if you want to run this at 2400 megahertz, you're going to change it to 1200 because 1200 times two is 2400. But since we've added 3200 megahertz RAM, we want to change this to 1600 megahertz. Once we apply these changes, our RAM will be running at a faster speed. We're going to back out of here because there's a few more settings we need to change. Next thing we're going to change is under NBIO common options. GFX configuration, integrated graphics controller is set to auto. We want to change this to forces, UMA mode, UMA specified, scroll to UMA frame buffer size. And I like changing this to four. That way we've dedicated four gigabytes of RAM to the internal Vega three graphics. We're going to back out of here. There's one last thing I like to change. We're still in the NBIO common options section. System configuration, it's set at 35 watts, at least that's what it was on my unit. We're going to go in here and change it to 54 watts. This is going to up the TDP of that CPU and allow it to boost a little more and a little longer. So now that we have all three of those options changed, we're going to back up, find exit, 
and we're going to choose the very first option, Exit Saving Changes. Choose Yes, and the unit's going to reboot. Now what I'm going to do is save the changes. I'm going to boot into Windows. I'm going to show you that the changes have taken effect. And then I'm going to show you some benchmarks that I ran with my settings that we're using here versus the stock settings with the VCS right out of the box. All right, so here it is. I've got the task manager up and running. As you can see, we have that Ryzen embedded R1606G. Our memory is now running at 3200 megahertz instead of 2400 megahertz. And if we head over here to the GPU section, you can see that we now have a dedicated four gigabytes of RAM for the GPU itself. We can also check that out in CPU-Z, going to memory. So you can see we're running close to 1600 megahertz. So we times that by two, that's 3200, dual channel. And over here under GPU-Z, you can see that we have that dedicated four gigs of RAM for the GPU. Now it's time to take a look at a few benchmarks and see just how much of a performance increase we got by adding that RAM and applying the new settings. First up, we have the Heaven Benchmark by UniEngine. On the left-hand side, we have that 2400 megahertz RAM with the stock settings. On the right-hand side, 3200 megahertz RAM with the new settings. So as you can see, total score with the 2400 megahertz RAM, 1468. With the upgraded RAM and the new settings, we scored a 1640. Next up, we have 3D Mark Fire Strike. With the upgraded RAM and the new settings, 1440. Stock settings, stock RAM, 1256. I also went through and ran 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score with the upgraded RAM and the new settings, 5,660. And with the old setup, 4,890. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we don't have much headroom because this is a low-end APU. But I was actually pretty impressed with the score increase of PC Mark 10. On the old setup, with the old RAM and the stock settings, 2,049. With this upgraded setup, 3,289, which is actually a pretty significant increase when it comes to PC Mark 10 and these low end PCs. So in the end, we definitely got a nice little bump in GPU and CPU performance by upping that TDP and adding that faster RAM, but this isn't gonna make it a supercomputer. I have to stress this again, this is a low end embedded dual core AMD APU, and even with what we've done today, we're not gonna be running AAA games at 1080p on this machine, but it is a nice little bump if this is what you're working with. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the VCS, just let me know in the comments below. I have made two other videos showing off some PC games and emulation. If you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.